presidential candidate. Uh, this morning, Simon Kagwanjala speaks uh, to Honorable Robert Chagulanyi Sentamu, who is selected uh, to become a presidential aspirant uh, for his uh, very first time. Simon, good morning. Tell the Honorable uh, that he is my member of parliament and that one of the things uh, that I would like him uh, to uh, answer, I don't know whether it's on your cards of questions, is uh, what we are going to do about the state of Bobby Wine Road. Uh, you know I'm becoming a resident in his territory very soon. So you're an aspiring voter? Absolutely. Uh, no, I don't For vote. Matter, aren't you? No, I don't vote. I don't vote. But, well, um, I'll certainly raise that question and uh, more questions. Uh, we are at Magere, the residence of uh, Honorable Robert Chagulanyi, Bobby Wine. Three things always strike me whenever I come around. One is the hospitality, the well-kept green, and a very warm family. Uh, here we are. I don't know whether that would compromise me, but regardless, uh, Honorable Robert Chagulanyi is already in his seat ready to speak to us on a number of issues we are catching up on politics especially in the face of the new announcement from the electoral commission that uh, campaigns are going to be run virtually something that the public has dubbed a scientific election how prepared is he and to what extent would that dampen his mood for the presidency welcome aboard and thank, thank you for you. joining us thank you very how much are you much. i'm all good thank you how are you after that fabulous concert we are now talking politics we are talking reality, not politics. I hope you've been able to switch from music, and we're now talking real politics. <laughs> like I said, I don't talk politics, I talk reality. These things that we're talking about are reality. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Are you ready for a scientific election? There is no scientific election, and please avoid using that word. I am ready for an election as prescribed by the law. Okay, going by the prescription of uh, the Electoral Commission, in their roadmap, and the first guideline is no mass rallies, and campaigns will be run in, of course, in a bid to, to balance between the pandemic guidelines and politics. Campaigns are going to not to be run um, uh, normally. We're going to do mass, rather, mass media. Well, I think, first and foremost, Ugandans need to understand the realities here one they need to understand what the electoral commission is although it's called an independent electoral commission but ugandans need to know that in this situation we have a dictator that has been playing around whenever it comes to elections until he couldn't play around no more he's facing with he's facing a generation that he has never faced before he's facing dynamics he has never faced before so this is close to a coup it is not an election and secondly we need to understand the electoral commission we need to understand that here is a Ebiabakama, a taremwa uh who is this other guy you know coming together with kaguta and getting instructions from him to play around and rip off ugandans again i think that needs to come out very clear no the electoral commission is mindful of the current situation where we have a pandemic in place yeah, but unless the Electoral Commission and its membership are living on Mars, but if they live in Uganda, they should be aware of what is going on right now as we speak in Ichikubo and in all other towns. People are packed. People are going about their usual business. It is the same Electoral Commission that connived with the security organs to stop us from consulting an activity that is within the law, you see. It is the same electoral commission that is being led by the Abakama, who has always been used to stifle the voices of dissent. We should remember that this is the same guy that was used to pin Dr. Vesije on allegations of rape. So it is important that Ugandans know the people we are dealing with before we go any further. And that is why we are saying you are not going to play with us. This time we are not fools. You are not going to take us for a ride. Okay. The decision is already sealed candidates are going to do virtual campaigns sealed by who by the electoral commission uh -huh. that is mandated to manage elections in the yes country. but that decision is illegal it is being contested by you know people across the device virtually via media are you willing to abide that or is you, or you're bowing out 
No, 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 no. We don't bow out. Okay. Museveni said the uh, the law says uh, you are free, but I'm saying you're not free. Okay. Museveni said uh, the law says you have the right to earn, you have the right to practice a profession, but I'm saying not. Museveni said you, uh, the law said you can you can reach out to the people of Uganda, but I say you cannot. We don't have to follow those illegal orders. We don't have to follow the dictator and his machinations. No, but let's be realistic. Yes. If consultation, if consultative meetings that you had embarked on mm. were stopped, they, and they nothing happened. No, no, no. We consulted. I've always told you that we have our way of reaching the people of Uganda. Okay. When they, I mean, we are not their generation, so we are not their style. We move Robert Dobb style. When they close the door, we use the window. So we where, where is the window now? There's no window, actually. I, I imagine you're now pushed to the wall. No, no, no. They're no trying option. to shut a door where there is no door. The people of Uganda are there. Those people are looking at me or maybe um, my colleagues that they fear most. But the people of Uganda are there. Right now, as we speak, our comrades are consulting. We are going about our usual business. And like I've been saying, we are going to go into a real election. Okay? They will think that they are going to stay for me what, as a what, person. What would it take to go into a real, a real election, like you, you claim? Exactly the way it has been doing. Simon, I will remind you that uh, one, in Malawi, there has been an election. In America, there is an election this year. And many other countries are having elections this year. Okay? These countries, many of them, for example, the U.S., has been very severely hit. But because this is a fundamental decision that cannot be you know uh, gone around you can't go around this so people must have their freedom to interact how do you vote for somebody you've never seen how do you vote for somebody who has never spoken to you and articulated their policies no, but it's a joke you have an opportunity of using the media don't you i i, I thought it's something that you'd be embracing are you kidding me my brother before i even say that the media does not effectively reach even 30 percent of our population it for does. example how 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 wide is the electricity coverage in uganda less than 30 percent okay how wide is tv coverage in uganda how many people can afford a smartphone or afford the internet which internet museveni and his government also put a tax on why because they don't want ugandans to communicate and now they bring the same nonsense again to fall around ugandans Ugandans are not going to take that nonsense. And I must also tell you, my brother, you know as well as I know that a bad election is much more dangerous to Uganda than COVID-19. And this was witnessed in 1980. Museven was my age. And he said the same things that I'm saying. Only for him, he used violence, which you don't intend to use. But I'm telling them, I am warning those old men not to mess because they are putting our country in danger. A bad election is very, very no, dangerous. The argument that comes from the key players, the key managers of this election, is that they want to give Ugandans an opportunity to cast a vote, not to postpone. But the only viable option for now to, to curb the spread of uh, COVID-19 is by going media. That is according uh, to them. And media is an opportunity. That you, you have is a platform. No, you have no, a platform. no, no. How many times have you had us being blocked from TV stations. How many times have you seen opposition leaders being pulled out of radio stations? Why do you think they will allow us to, you know, uh, use them this time around? And besides, the majority of radio stations and TV stations are owned by regime apologists, okay? How do you expect them to let us, uh, you know, or to give us access to and them and you be, media people you, are you should be pushing no, for balance no 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 no, no, no. Coverage. i'm telling you, you my should brother be pushing for balanced coverage it's not a matter of pushing because you will never push for anything against a dictator and get it okay these people are not reasonable anymore and i was still putting you um um on spot you the media people you have always or you have also been co-opted into this trying to sanitize it trying to make it look normal okay i've seen that as soon as the electoral commission came out with this nonsense uh, for lack of a better word the media was quickly brought in to uh, uh, you know create 
uh, a rosy image of oh, how it's going to be done and all that. No, that's a joke, my friend. No. In Nakapiripit, in our home in Kanoni, in very many places no, in Uganda. Ready, there's uh, uh, as next media, for instance, we are yes. ready to comb every place of this country and to yes. give Just equal like coverage. you've been ready, but yes, but don't be used to drum down this joke of a scientific election because it is not real. Museveni fears an election. Museveni fears people. He does not want us to go to the people. I must hold on, Simon. I must remind you that Museveni is at his weakest point. Okay, save for these machinations that he's trying to use to create an image that is still strong. No, he is not. The man cannot even move around the country. He wants to die in office like Mugabe, like all these other so petty dictators. No, I'm daring you to a real election. election. Are you kidding me? There is nothing like a scientific election. In any case, how are people going to vote? People are going to come out and go cast their vote. So he wants people to come cast their vote when they've not heard from anybody else. He has been campaigning. When he stopped us from consulting, he was going around the country having rallies. But he's even scared of us coming out just one day because he knows he will be finished. So again, I dare Museveni to a legal election. You were saying that the Electoral Commission um, took this decision because of COVID-19. Are you kidding me? How many hospitals have been refurbished ever since COVID-19 started with all the billions that have been, uh, you know, streaming in? Who is talking about it? You know? But so, let, let's look at me. the reality, the, yes. key th the key issues at stake now. The Electoral Commission has already rolled out a roadmap to which some candidates, some aspirants, seem comfortable, um, despite a few inconveniences, they seem comfortable to go by this. So if you the come out now person. and cry foul, no, no, we are not and, crying and foul, we are fighting foul this time, sorts. we are not crying, okay? Any candidate that is comfortable with this joke is working for Museveni, okay? Our business is not to just go into an election. Our mission is to remove Museveni and all his dictatorial tendencies. And we are serious. We are like no other. Okay? So, any come in, many candidates will run and they will come and uh, they will go to Kola and say, oh, Museveni won us and all that nonsense. That is not us, my friend. For us, we've been used for a long time. Now, we want to remove the guy. And he knows we are serious. And that's why he's trying to go around. What would be your plan to change the course of things, to see that the Electoral Commission goes into what you call a normal election? It is not supposed to be our plan. This plan was put in place in 1995 in the Constitution. The Constitution envisaged even a situation like this, and they put provisions. One of these provisions, um, I cannot get the article off my head, but... Uh, the Constitution says that in a situation like this where the election cannot go ahead, you know, there will be a state of emergency. Museveni would not be president. The Speaker of Parliament would take over. And of course Museveni fears that. He cannot imagine himself out of power for one day. So everything is within the law. Our laws as they are, they provide for everything Ugandans want. Do you support proponents of a postponement of this election? I support proponents of the law, of the Constitution. If there's any postponement, it's not supposed to exceed six months. And in that postponement, there's supposed to be a state of emergency where Museveni is not in charge. If that is the case, I wouldn't have any problem with it. But I must remind Ugandans that we need servant leadership as soon as yesterday. It has been just, just under four months of COVID. But we have tested the blunt of mismanagement, the plant of corruption. Look at all the billions that have come in. They've been stolen. By who? By Museveni apologists. You're not sure about this. I'm very sure about it. Okay? Yeah. You start with the food. Because I know it was distributed. Distributed. Although we don't have the statistics, but Thank it was distributed. Much. Yeah, I mean, the, the quality of the food notwithstanding, but the distribution itself. They are talking about masks. I mean, this has been a COVID bonanza. It is a joke. 
the Ugandans have only suffered and been ripped off in this COVID situation. Honorable Robert Chagulani, yes, sir. You want to be on the ballot paper? No, I want to be president. Not just being on the ballot paper. I'm going to be on the ballot paper, but I want to be president of Uganda. But at the same time, mm. you forged um, a coalition of sorts. Yes. United Forces of Change. Yes. Don't you think you're rushing the idea of be standing for the presidency? What if the coalition kicks you out and opts for another candidate? You see, I love looking at things realistically. One, we are not rushing because we have uh, studied the election dynamics since uh, 1996. But for me, more vividly, since 2011, that's when I was old enough to, you know, comprehend issues. We've seen IPFC, IPC, and now TDA. They took over two years discussing, and they failed. So for us, we made up our mind early enough, considering the dynamics, considering the voices that we had been picking from people, especially the young people of Uganda, and later the elders of Uganda. And we decided that we are taking on the Museveni regime as a generation. What are the terms of engagement between people's government and people's power? Unfortunately, you didn't uh, let me finish, but I'll answer your question. I know your time, but it is not only the people's government under Dr. Kiza Besije that we are engaging. We have had engagements and understandings with the Justice Forum, JEMA. We have had uh, engagements and uh, understandings to a certain extent with the Democratic Party. We've had engagements and that, hopefully... That uh, that hope, crash. No, 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 it did not crash. Cra I said to a certain extent because you will notice that the majority of DP leaders, we are with them and still we are also in engagements with the DP president, uh, the Honorable Robert Mao, because I believe we are stronger together. Now, we've had engagements with the ANT and uh, General Mujisha Muntu. I've even had a conversation with uh, uh, General Tumukunde, with uh, Joseph Kabuleta, with all people that have expressed interest. Or and yes, of persuading you, persuading them to support you, to persuading them to support our cause. This is not about me, Kagwa. I am not a politician. I come into this as you know the glue that wants to bring people together. My duty was to connect a generation, to unite this generation, and after this, we want to unite the population because this is not only about young people, but it is first things first. Anyway, coming to uh, Dr. KB and uh, mm. the people's uh, government, mm. Mm. we saw it very importantly um, that we should also connect, work together, because our ultimate goal is removing this dictatorship. And we also know that the dynamics are in favor of one a new face, but also unity. So we are trying to bridge that gap. But even if we don't, you know, successfully bring everybody together, this is going to be a coalition of the willing. But ultimately, we have said it in no unequivocal terms that we are taking on the seven. Yeah, but I, is this a coalition targeting 2021? Certainly. We're not talking about 20... You, you know, 20, we're not talking about 2023, we're not talking about 2022, we're talking about 2021. And among the goals of this coalition is to select from amongst yourselves someone who would be the flag bearer for the presidency. Among the uh, ideas in this coalition is to come together. Is to come together and see the obvious. I've said it before, and I'm saying this again on your show, that the people of Uganda have seen this long ago. The people of Uganda have united long ago. It is us to unite and do the necessary and do the obvious, which is obvious. You seem to have all hope for 2021 elections. Yeah. Don't you think you're, you're not being realistic, given the blockades that are already in place? <laughs> You see now, and that is why I was accusing you people of being co-opted. How dare you crush the hope of Ugandans? This hope was created in 1995 under that constitution. And if we follow the law, that hope is supposed to be there. It's not supposed to surprise anybody. I mean, what I'm talking about is not coming from me. This was written, okay? And you, the elite who Dr. Vesige hates so much, you have been trying to use very good English to turn things around. Okay? 
The people of Uganda have a right to choose. And the people of Uganda have shown it. And that is why Museveni and his electoral commission are trying to stay for that voice. That's why they're trying to run away from the people of Uganda. For an election in the mode that has been prescribed by the electoral commission is unstoppable. That is what you're saying. And that is what uh, they want to drive in the minds of the people. While you say the bid for uh, Yabakama and this, uh, uh, um, this, who is this uh, arrogant guy? Um, Taremwa and all those others, you know, they want to seem unstoppable. But the 40 plus million Ugandans are unstoppable too. The desire for change and freedom is unstoppable too. The desire for justice is unstoppable too. Okay? So you cannot tell me that just a few people from the same family... Where, where is your hope anchored uh, that the desire is unstoppable? Our hope the is anchored uh, there in There have been the so many efforts. Yeah. You tried Toji Kwatako and it hit a dead end. The constitution was changed. Article well, 102B was changed. Yeah, um, that was a matter to be finished in the parliament. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it, this happened sometime in 1966 when Obote sent the military to, to, to in fact, abrogate the constitution and uh, put in place the Pigeon Hall constitution. It was Museveni who did it again. But that was a matter of the parliament. This is a matter of the population where SFC has no control, where police or the military have no control. We are more than four ten or seven. Museveni rallied uh, his bandits and other people into violence and they ended up killing more than half a million of our fathers and mothers and aunties. You understand? Going back to the coalition that you mooted, it was a beautiful idea with campaigns uh, Um, one of the campaigns that caught my attention is the no nedda where you had to bang suspense. After two days, it was no more. What happened? And sisters from the FDC, we agreed to support each other in our different ideologies. It was a beautiful idea. I must remind the nation um, one of the that campaigns that our disagreement is that was not However, where you had we as people power were saying and we continue to say that we are taking Museveni into an election. He believes in violence, he believes in Kavuyo, and he wants all the world cameras are focused on Uganda. Now our brothers and sisters, we are uh, saying that no, we need to defy, we need to rally people to protest, and we should rally them to protest. And yes, I took part in that protest. You banned this response. did for two days we shall rally ugandans to do anything that creates awareness you can be sure that whoever had so have 10 or 20 or 30 other forms of protest we shall Do them and it's on this juncture that I want to encourage Ugandans that everything you might have the swords, you might have the guns, but be it blowing their horns, be it banging suspense, be it singing, be it just you know posting on social media. Let us do anything, we must not despise any effort to free Uganda. Well, you're joining a, a sea of other contenders. 
we've seen joint into the fray um, 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 Charles Womushan and several others what kind of a while ago it was almost unthought of to challenge seven but now Ugandans believe that anybody can run for president especially if they have when you come together I mean look look at Malawi they had to come together to beat the incumbent that was there of course they didn't uh, uh, manage to get 100 percent unity because there was also an end on this unity so i call upon I must mention that Museveni has used this trick many times, trying to create his own contenders to vulgarize the opponent. I should not see us, which must not come off as people that are just looking uh, for their own uh, freedom. As we take a very quick break, yeah. People Power announced that they would be endorsing candidates. Yeah. yeah. Except for the presidency. Yeah. Aren't you creating a cult of sorts? Okay. No, but the position of the president is his rendition. It is not, I, I, and we announced uh, right there, mm. close to a year ago, when we were announcing the coordinators, when we had a wide range of members of parliament, a wide range of other leaders, it was a very big function. The unanimous city endorsed. Definitely. As a sole candidate. As a candidate. As a sole candidate. As a sole can candidate. Long time ago. At least a presidential candidate. Anyway, you were we will we, we, We'll talk about the rest Let's after the break. Let's take a break and return shortly. Good sure. morning. Use this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to put President Museveni on the notice. Mr. Museveni, you might have forgotten what you said in 1980, but we have not forgotten. You, Museveni, put Obote on notice on the eve of the 1980 election. You said that if Obote rigs the election, you will go to the bush and fight against him. We have come to that point right now, yet again. And we are telling you that you either organize a free and fair election or step down peacefully. I say that again. We are telling you that you either organize a free and fair election or you step down peacefully. But if you continue provoking Ugandans, Ugandans will rise up against you and you will end up in the dustbins of history, like your friend Gaddafi, like your friend Mobutu, and like your friend Omar El Bashir. Amen. Thank you for listening to me, ladies and gentlemen, men and women of Uganda. I salute you. Tosoba la kunyo nyora mutu relationship eri wakati wa COVID-19 ne kafiu na yes because tobu debu ziba batandi kamba kubabu kubimigo na atinga tuandi bademo na fene tu contributing kubintuwe visalibu wawo kubukufe tika chotadeo kafiu luacho mutadeo anyigirizani otadeo lockdown luacho jitadeo enyigirizani eyambani ogade akedi ateno ugula ozi molzi njaule ilichi 
ukobi ya baboda msite atenga wa, 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 naba taxi ate wali wa babasi zikambi wanti wali wana njini wazo duwachi bisali duwa vitia netuba ngensi ya fenga haba kufuga batia ukusala webi intu ntu kubanga you know bija kwa fektinga so we use music to you know communicate all this and we are not the first fela kuti ba, christopher sebaduka Miriam Makeba, Ochegera Boy Wange, Balake Dube, Bob Mali. Generally, I want to nabo 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 to kiririzam. They used music to communicate. Because Bob Mali say when music hit, you don't feel no pain. I take at your favor, artist. Chira be cafe, to see that they okay, you can be in see a fe, kubakati avantu ava jira matai, we go get a mazima bagama, oh your politics, oh yeah, gala kwe simbao. Negwe artists where you get a chin to each two fo, baja chifu namu love. So mko you say music wa mumana. It's a pleasure hanging out with fellow artists. And then after we got to buy in Birimu, can I come back? I just sit up to tumble. Now we jolly sit up to tumble. They say, "Emo na Bobby Wine go in back to politics." Nenga ba mo na politics is not anything special. Politics is you. It is the decisions that are being made for you, whether not by you, but they are made for you. I don't know COVID-19. Ah, wadenga chali chizibu. Naya tu yambi nyu nyu nyu. Abantu wa feneba jukira Tibino biba kwa atako Tibi kwa atako bantu wa lala Kubanga ababa tufuga Biba salao na febitu afektinga Fundamentale biya afektinga Bana boba lidechi Biya afektinga Baba genze kusomero Bate biya genze yu Katisawa zino tulimu lockdown Kusipe kwa angali ape Tua gala nchuka chuka Tua gala nchuka chuka Tua gala nchuka chuka Robert Chagulani vows that whatever it takes, he will be on the ballot paper for 2021 Electoral Commission has attracted quite a huge debate. But well, in the coming months, what should we be watching? As, as you they should put their eyes on Uganda but Uganda watch all the steps of course Don't be, you know, don't be fooled by that because there's absolutely no way it is a duck. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, Ojo and they go meet Kaguta and to, to, to impose them on the people of Uganda and they expect. Just to take that, people of you, I don't owe them any, any 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 good words. Okay, they are our servants. They are not our bosses. Yeah. Okay. I think you're going personal. No, I'm not going. Personal. Just go for the institution. Not talking to a politician. You can keep quiet. Me, I will say them. In real terms, yeah. the coming months are going to be.
highly political. Yeah. It's political. Okay? COVID-19 has been... politicized what the? yeah but they've not handled it the way uganda is handling it okay for example so we do with freedoms of people nothing will stop them in, in real terms <laughs> yeah the i will remind you but be because hiding. this was just well I going to do rallies Simon Kagwanjala handled it the way Uganda is handling it okay for example so we do with freedoms of people nothing will stop them I will remind but because this was just well are you going to do rallies Simon Kagwanjala anywhere there to town you must social distance you must wear a mask you must do this but coming to our rallies we can put who have social distance about people that are in town and they don't even care Simon long as he stays in state house okay and this must be clear and I'm sure you, you people in the media why are we discussing things people want a real election okay if Museveni there would be uh, um, all ambulances now than police patrol cars if it cared about Ugandans, the doctor, everybody would have a mask. He does not care about you. He doesn't. He sees us as he even look. look at us as, as their slaves. Um, the momentum for change. Change especially actually me I'm very glad that all this has come of course it would Ugandans especially those young people that spent all their time in discos many times I would go to club and feel so bad I'm like but when they were locked down when they all in the in this period period all of us tested the blunt of uh, especially that no out of it now save for those that have been killed by the regime you know by By the uh, actions and omissions of the government, we used to people cannot even border border to go to, to, to go to hospital. So this, this situation, situation um, politically sterile anymore.
has anyone come to you so it come here to occupy in a position i came uh, staying member of parliament when uganda is still of my constituents if i went to you know visit uh, a hospital or a prison i would be arrested you understand so you're creating a vacancy in your constituency yet it was more of a sure deal for you my brother it is not about me now that is where we go wrong since when did it become about me chadon has been there before i was born it will be there long after i die okay and the same with uganda it is not about me i just have to do my role to accomplish my mission now i'm here for a purpose okay several other contenders in the past races have claimed that they were rigged and they went into oblivion what are the chances that chagulan will be no more after 2021 uh my brother kagwa this is not about chagulan chagulan you could be killed like they tried to kill me in a row do you think this revolution will stop <laughs> no it will not stop one time somebody asked me and i told them like i will tell you now that we feel like we are already winning okay our biggest mission was to open the minds of ugandans tupac shaku one of the greatest rappers of all time said i cannot guarantee you that i will change the world but i'll guarantee you that I'll spark the brain that will change the world. So we might, you know, face anything, anything might happen, but be sure that nothing can turn back. Ugandans cannot turn back. Museveni cannot do anything to stop the yes, course of his revolution that has no end in sight. So you can't imagine that 2021 change is coming. It is your sight where that end is not and you probably might need to remove your specs so it's clear <laughs> you don't see freedom inside we see it inside i told you in the beginning of the show that the seven is at its weak and it is at his weakest okay never uh, never before have we seen the people of uganda especially young people so interested in the way they're being claim. I, th I think it's far-fetched to imagine that Museveni is at his weakest my brother i live in this country okay at 38 i've been watching the entire country i've been moving the entire country i continue to move across the country i see with my eyes i don't watch this on tv no i see with my own eyes everywhere i go people have come to the realization how deprived they are how cheated they are how duped they've been okay so it is now 34 coming to 35 years after the Museveni entry that people realize how much of a con man he is how much of a liar he is how much of an oppressor he is and yes they are realizing how much of a coward he is so if i tell you that Museveni is at his weakest i know what i'm talking about because he has been completely undressed okay he has been completely undressed what would happen if Besige um, bows to pressure from the FDC and gives the presidency another shot? Well, that question would best go to Dr. Besige. I mean, like you... No, you are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. And uh, he's uh, traditionally been... He made it a two-horse race between... He's been the biggest contender in the race. But that was then. This is now. We are talking about the situation as it is not as it was for example since when did you hear uh people like eddie mutue commenting on the politics of this country people like kabaya since when did you hear them comment about matters of this country because it was not their business it is three years ago only three years ago well, so, so you brought no politics to the occasion not me my brother don't tell this on me us all of us our oppression has opened our eyes our pain has opened our eyes so uganda is like no is like never before and you saw this you saw this after chadondo 
You saw this in Bujiri, you saw this in Nijinja, you saw this in Rukonji, you saw this in Narua, until Museveni stopped all these elections. Because we would beat him at every election. Even if we put an election where Museveni comes from, we would beat him there. That's why he either wants to stop this election or to play around with it in any funny way. You get what I'm trying to say. If so, the, let's look at realities. Let's look at... If the election came as it is designed by now, what would be your chances of winning? Forget the way it is designed. Forget the way it's being talked about. Ugandans know how an election is supposed to go, and they're going to carry it on like that. Okay? We you're, are going to go to the election. You're dwelling on impossibilities. Yeah, yeah, I, I, no, no, no. For three years, we've been sensitizing Ugandans, telling them to get their national IDs. They are ready to vote, okay? Ugandans are going to go out there to vote. The only the thing, scientific the only, what is scientific? There's nothing scientific about this election. You see, you are trying to drum the word scientific in our heads, and we reject it. And I'm telling you, go tell your bosses, there's nothing like scientific election, okay? According to their, um, uh, their plan, still people are going to go line up and vote. What Museven is trying to stop is the campaigns, because he knows we are going to shame him. He has seen millions of people following us, and he has been paying people to attend his campaigns. He does not have that money, okay? He would rather use it to buy the media people, to buy religious leaders, to buy anybody that could have uh, uh, raised the... Komanda the... Gwezi kiza boda boda tuli mkogera luzungu one. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, so, seven fears, the election, okay? We are already beating him even if the election was today. But we are saying that even if we are beating him, even if the election is today, even if we know that people are already aware, we need to whip them. We need to remind them one more round. But, but Museven fears that because he knows that even the international community is going to see it. He knows that this election, but, but, you cannot read it. Don't you find it absurd that most of the key opposition players are wired to be candidates for this election. In what do you call key Mao, Mao, no, but Mao, Mugisha um, Muntu, um, uh, and others. No, but you, think so you, you are only saying two names, okay? Yeah. As if you're conditioned to say only those names. There's Joseph Kabuleta, okay? He's also running. Yeah, but he there doesn't have a, a strong traction. Says who? Says who? Three years ago, you did not know me. I knew you. Okay, I mean, you did not know me uh, in the political lines. Mm -hmm. Here I am. And the seven is scared. So don't condition us to what, to what you know. We came to break those traditional uh, narratives. Mm -hmm. For us, we came to break tradition. We are here as a generation. So please don't bring this to us, apparently this one or the other one. Yes, we're reaching out to everybody because we respect everybody the same. But ultimately, the final decision is with the people of Uganda, those women that sell um, uh, gonja on the road, those border border boys, those prisoners you see, those uh, uh, people that you love to call Kadama in, 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 uh, in the diaspora working so hard to feed their families. Those are the people we rely on. Those people, we the ghetto people, we are more than 80%. Okay. So we came to demystify that. Don't give us that elitist talk of, oh, I only know this, I only know the other. No, this is a revolution. Finally, one of the key denominators in an election mm. is money. Mm. And it is widely believed that you've, in the past, been bankrolled by the West. Now you can no longer travel. Don't you think this is going to be a hurdle for you? <laughs> They say it is money because that is what they know, okay? They were going to say, um, to Germany, in Cuba, Jetonia. In my context, I'll say, um, can be Germany, in Cuba, Jetonia. My brother, it did not take money. You don't have money. It's not about money. Yes, we don't have money, but it has never been about money, okay? They blocked my shoes. They cut down all our businesses, but we are still going because we know that God blessed us with a connection with the people. And that is what we are trying to use to empower those people. We don't pay people to support us. We don't pay people to see the truth. 
We don't pay people to know that the, the operation can end, that they can have better schools, better hospitals. It's not about money. And I pity those that target to money because they will be shocked. It's normal an election of strongholds where someone claims that their strength is mainly concentrated in certain areas. Where is your stronghold as Bobby Wine? In the people of Uganda, the common man. No, no, I think that's generic. No. If you could tell us, um, some people would imagine that being a Muganda, perhaps you be... <laughs> That is old talk. That is old, old talk. That is uh, old school. And that's why it is hard for us to connect with that old generation because they are stuck in religion, they are stuck in tribe, they are stuck in uh, gender. My brother, I've been singing for close to 20 years. I'm a household name in every house, whether eastern, northern, western, or central. In I'm music? Now, that is where you go wrong. I've been telling you that I don't talk about music or politics. It is reality. Music is a reflection of life. You people have been see seeing me just singing. But I was talking and communicating to the people. And that is why the politicians don't understand me. Okay? They thought that this is about them until they realized that all along I've been waking up people. Now people are wide awake. And you cannot stop that. Okay? So our stronghold is... In the west, it is in the north, it is in the east, and it is in the central. It is everywhere. Wherever people are oppressed, wherever people listen to music, we have reached there, and we've connected with them. There are three options as we sign out. A boycott of an election that is organized in this, in this kind of mode, or participation, or forging a coalition to form one candidate. Which of the three would go? Would you you go see, now, you, you're very limited. You, you look at three options. Me, I look at uh, a million options, man. I don't look at three options. We are going into But boycotting is viable. No, no, no. We are not boycotting anything. We're not boycotting anything because we've been preparing for this election for three years. We are already moving. But now you're stuck. Things. Now you're stuck. That is what you think. And that is the narrative that you're trying to push in people's minds that we are stuck. We are not stuck. And the people of Uganda are not stuck. It is you who is stuck. It is those people okay. that what, are stuck. What do you have on the cards? You're going into an election, right? Yeah. By who called crook? We are going in an election by law. Forget those words by who or crook or whatever. No, we are going into an election. Tugenamukulonda okwalari. That brings us to the end. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very uh, much for uh, having Robert Chagulani us. for hosting us. And it's been an opportunity for us again. Sure. Can I leave a final message to the people Go of ahead. Uganda? Thank you very much. To the people of Uganda, do not be woodwinked. Do not be lied to. Not from the media, not from anywhere. Seek your own truth and see it look around you connect to the people around you pass the message these people are trying so much to stifle your voice don't be shocked if Museveni wakes up one day and says, okay no more election okay so don't be shocked by anything but just know that we have been on course and we continue to be on course are going into an election it is about you it is not the parliament that is going to save you it is not the courts that are going to save you it is not even the media that is going to save you it is not the religious leaders that are going to save you it is yourself and this message should go to all ugandans all noble ugandans you people in the media the religious leaders the cultural leaders you people should see the truth like your people are seeing it in his letter uh, from Birmingham, Birmingham jail uh, Dr. Martin Luther King wrote to the religious leaders and explained why the young people of those days were despising religion and the church. Why? Because they saw that the church and religion was not uh, standing with them, was not being just. And now, you, the media, is it the situation today? You are, yes. Is it the situation today? Yes, and not think... only with the, re the religious leaders, but with all leaders, beginning with you, the media. You should put things straight let, let because this people are watching you and watching you. Religious Christian. leaders betrayed you. Not me. It's not me to betray. And I don't want you to tag this to religious leaders. I'm talking about leaders across the divide. I'm talking about cultural leaders. 
I'm talking about religious leaders. I'm talking about opinion leaders like we, the artists and uh, sportsmen. I'm talking about you, the media, because you're supposed to be re the reflection of society. Do not be used. Our part. We've played you our must part. not. We've be given you a platform. Unless it's not, not just a platform. It is not just a platform. You know how many times do I uh, come on NBS TV? And there are even some radio stations, our own, that never even host me because they think my truth is too hard. It is not illegal, but it's too hard, okay? But I want to remind you that the people of Uganda are looking at you, and this is a time when they are going to judge you morally. This is going to determine whether they follow you or they don't follow you anymore. This is a moment of truth, and you should communicate to all of you. I thank you. We are going to the elections, and we are going to win Museveni. We are not violent, but we are assertive. Keep your eyes on the prize. Soon or later, we shall get the freedom that we deserve, that we've been waiting for all our lifetime. Thank you. Well, that's all we had from uh, Honorable Robert Chagulani. Maybe after here, we'll go for some music. Good morning. <laughs> so, use this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to put President Museveni on the notice. Mr. Museveni, you might have forgotten what you said in 1980, but we have not forgotten. You, Museveni, put Obote on notice on the eve of the 1980 election. You said that if Obote rigs the election, you will go to the bush and fight against him. We have come to that point right now, yet again. And we have